Oh, boys and girls, friends from near and far, welcome back to the channel. We're going to do the second installment today of uh, my own watch collection. We did uh, 11 watches in the first uh, video, and we're going to do nine in this one. Oh, I'm sure there's some people going completely OCD. Why didn't he do 10, 10? Well, that's all right. I uh, completely sympathize. I'm actually the kind of guy who counts the steps when I walk up a pair of stairs. So uh, anyway, let's get on to the first one. One of my absolute favorites. Universal Genève Compax. Now, Universal Genève uh, are famous for their uh, white shadows. Uh, of course, the pole router, but also the Compax series. This one is a Compax. It's uh, sometimes mistakenly called a tri compax because of the three sub dials, but it is just the compax. And as you can probably see from uh, the design and uh, the condition of the watch, it's not a very old watch. Um, the exact date of manufacture, I'm not sure, but I would guess uh, mid 90s. So this, in some ways, a re edition of the original compax which uh, first uh, was uh, made in the 1940s. And you'll see this one uh, referenced as the Compax 1950, which does not mean it was made in 1950, but it's uh, sort of taken its design from uh, that era. What I love about this watch is that it's just very simple, beautiful layout, I think. Very symmetric and clean dial. Now, if we look inside the watch, this is a watch that was made post the quartz crisis. So uh, there's no in-house movement because UG didn't make them anymore. So they kind of had to settle for second best, which is the moon watch caliber, the Le Mania 1873, also known as Omega 861, of course. But it's a decent movement. Going on to the next watch. This is a watch probably quite a few of you will uh, recognize. It's a Grand Psycho GS61 that I serviced on this channel uh, not so long ago. And I just fell in love with this watch. Just a fabulous watch in my view. So uh, I consider it mine. Now there are many uh, Grand Psychos. And most of them uh, look uh, not so much like this one. They're uh, typically much, uh, I should say it, less extravagant. But this uh, green dial, the faceted crystal, and this wonderful movement inside it uh, just makes this a watch I completely love. Yeah, I'm just sitting here admiring the watch myself. <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, the inside. Of course, you see this in much more detail in uh, the video. But it's also a beautiful movement. I think uh, this watch can uh, absolutely compete with the likes of Rolex or Omega. So, yeah. And we're going to go to something completely different again. A Longines Grand Prize automatic with a mystery dial. So these dials were uh, quite fashionable in the 60s and early 70s. But I also thought the case on this uh, watch was very cool. It's got a Florentine finish, which is very unusual. Uh, not everyone's taste for sure. But I thought it looked cool, so uh, yeah. It's uh, called a mystery dial because uh, you don't see the hour hand. It's basically a disc instead of a hand, so it's not a big mystery. But it makes it more interesting, I suppose. I believe it has uh, the 350 inside, the movement. Uh, I still haven't opened it. I'll probably do that on the channel as well. Now it's time for a brand uh, I don't think a lot of you have seen before. It's a Mirexal. What? Mirexal. 
It's uh, actually a brand uh, that was owned by the biggest uh, retailer chain in Switzerland, Migro. And yes, uh, I can absolutely understand if, if someone scoffs and thinks <laughs> a retailer chain's watch. Well, it is Switzerland, so uh, it's not a bad watch. It's actually a pretty uh, high-grade watch. And uh, you find a lot of Mirixels in uh, Switzerland. So uh, I wouldn't scoff at it. This is not your uh, $10 Walmart watch. When we screw off the back, we see a uh, not too shabby Voljo 7733. So a uh, pretty darn high grade movement for a store watch. <laughs> which is why this just is a very cool watch. And yes, it will be restored on the channel. Moving on to another of my absolute favorites, a GS56, the ubiquitous uh, Grand Seiko model, but just very clean design. One of the watches I've worn the most, I think, very versatile. It's a watch that uh, really reflects the grammar of design uh, that Seiko had with uh, Taro Tanaka, the chief designer, wanting to have uh, surfaces that uh, reflected the light. So that goes on all sides of the case, also the dial, the hands, and so forth. And yes, it has been a little bit over polished uh, at points, this one. Looking inside the watch, we have the 5646A. A really, really good movement. Solid as uh, anything. And gives good results. Then we have a very different watch again. We have an Eberhardt Extra Fort or Extra Fort. So extra strong. I'm not sure why it's extra strong, but uh, that's what they call it. And no, this is not a vintage watch either, but it does have that same uh, design to it. I just love this dial. It's very clean, a lot of open space on it. So it really reflects the light well. And interestingly, it only has two uh, sub-dials. So uh, the one at uh, 9 o'clock is for the running seconds, and at 3 o'clock you have the uh, minute counter. So this is then apparently a minute counting chronograph. But wait, I spy, I spy with my little eye a 7750. Bit of a surprise, of course, given uh, that there's no hour counter on the dial. But Eberhardt is known for uh, modifying their chronograph uh, movements. So they did a nice job here, I think. Although the hour counter is, of course, sort of wasted. Anyway, we have another chronograph. This time a Seiko 6139B, but a very cool uh, movement. I honestly bought this watch just for the movement, but of course the dial is uh, really nice as well. And I would say this is a watch I do consider mine, but uh, I will fix and uh, sell it. But uh, those of you who have seen uh, a few videos on my channel do know that uh, Seiko is one of my absolute uh, favorite brands. Quite a few bells and whistles uh, on this watch, including how you quick set uh, the date and weekday by pressing and pressing harder. It's a very cool movement. And we will do this watch uh, in not so long. So something to look forward to, I hope. Now, well, one of the comments uh, was that I wasn't showing off a lot of Rolexes. The reason is quite simple. I only have one Rolex. And it's not your common Rolex at all. It's a so-called uh, Zephyr. I really like this watch. I think it's very, very classy. Uh, maybe a little bit uh, 
too refined in a sense. And honestly, I hardly wear it. But it is a beautiful design, I think. Also a watch I bought a long time ago before I could spot uh, badly finished cases like this one. So it's a horrible job on the case back there. Unfortunately, something you see quite uh, often on Rolexes. And um, inside the watch, it's not a whole lot better. A lot of uh, wear on the different parts. Not sure exactly how uh, that happened, to be honest, but uh, we'll have to fix that on camera. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. Ending uh, this video and this uh, run through my collection with uh, an absolute stunner, in my view. And also a pretty rare watch, a DeVille chronograph. One of the higher end uh, Omegas. It uh, has a pretty cool uh, and unique uh, layout with a date window at nine o'clock. Two registers and uh, a very uh, unusual movement. From uh, what I know, about uh, 10,000 were made of this movement in total. It's the 9.30. If it looks familiar, it's of course because it's a Lemania based uh, movement, recognizable from uh, the Chronostop, from uh, Moonwatch, and so forth. And that was the last watch in my collection. Hope you enjoyed this uh, videos. If you did, then uh, click and like and subscribe will uh, always help the channel. We'll be back shortly with a servicing video. Until then. Ciao, ciao.